Let's compute the MLE, the maximum likelihood estimate, for linear regression. So for a maximum likelihood estimate, we need to have some data. So let's set things up for computing an MLE. So we've got some data. And since linear regression is a supervised problem, it's x1s and so it's x's and y's. We got x1, y1, up through x and y n. And each of these xi's is a point in, say, d dimensional real space, and each of the y's is a just a real number. So we are given some data and for uh, and we need to assume some probabilistic model and under linear regression the model that we assume is that we assume that the, we have some random y's so remember for linear regression the setup was that we had y you know a generic y distributed as a normal random variable with mean w transpose x where x was the corresponding point for that y and mean sigma squared. So here, let's see. So let's let's assume. So so this is to be precise. This is for Gaussian linear regression. And let's assume that this variance is known. This sigma squared. So so we're going to assume. So assume sigma squared is known and then we're just going to find the MLE for W. So normally, remember, in linear regression, our parameters, theta, would be the pair W and sigma squared, but it'll just be W in this case since we're assuming this is known. Okay, so that's that's the generic thing, and now for our to model our data, we're going to assume these random variables Y1 through Yn, and we assume that they are independent and yi is just like this normal with mean w transpose xi and variance sigma squared okay so yeah so uh, independence is part of our assumption and for the mle so to compute the mle what's the mle well an MLE, a maximum likelihood estimate, is a maximizer. It's an it's an arg max over thetas, over all the possible thetas. So let's see, capital theta. In this case, since theta is just W, that's all the possible Ws, and that's just R D in this case, since we're W lives in the same space as as X as these exons. So it's a value, the MLE is a value which maximizes the likelihood, the probability of the data given theta. And so to be a little more precise here, maybe I should write, you know, because it's not necessarily unique. Um, maybe, so usually people think of this as a set rather than just a value since it's not necessarily unique, if it's not necessarily unique. So to be more precise, we want to find a value in the set of maximizers. Okay, so now we need to write this likelihood function in terms of our model. So how are we going to do that? Let's see. So this is our setup here. So let's see if we can write this likelihood. So this is the probability of all these points and now uh, under this model the x's are, are not random only the only thing that's random is the y's so this is this is equivalent you, so you, you know sometimes people condition on x here on the x's um, to define the likelihood function but to try to be consistent with our previous notation you could um, you could think about you know like each of the you could have some random variables xi that's where xi equals there are observed values with probability one, for example, that's the same thing. It's it's basically this, it's the same thing basically as conditioning. So it's the probability of the y's given the x's and 
theta. And since these are independent, it's the product of the probabilities as i goes from 1 to n of probability that yi equals little yi. And since yi depends only on xi, um, both in it, well, if xi is not random, then, it, you know, not, not, in a, not dependent in a statistical or probabilistic sense, but just functionally dependent, right? Because, you know, writing it this way, since technically speaking, you know, we don't have a distribution on theta and all, this is just, remember, this is a notational device to say that this, these, di these distributions are parameterized by theta. So, so functionally, yi only depends on xi, and we can drop the, the dependence on the other x's. Okay, so now what is this? What is this? What are these 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 factors here? Well, that's what our model tells us. So our model tells us that yi is normal, and we can write these so that each of these. So this is a product of these normal densities. And let's go ahead and maybe we'll just go ahead and write out what they are. So it's a normal. So it's 1 over the square root of 2 pi sigma squared e to the minus 1 over 2 sigma squared. The mean is, um, well, it, it's the value is yi, so it's yi minus the mean, which is w transpose xi. That difference squared. All right. Okay, so that's looking good. We got a good expression for for our likelihood function and now we'll do the usual trick of taking the logs log will it looks like it's going to be very useful here um, should we do that first or should we actually let's write one more line here let's let's pull together some things first let's so all these factors are the same over the n product, so this is just that thing to the nth power, and the product of the exponentials, we can pull together all the exponents, and if, so that becomes the sum of all these exponents, and we can pull out this 1 over 2 sigma squared, minus 1 over 2 sigma squared, we get the sum as i goes from 1 to n, yi minus w transpose xi squared. Okay. So now let's. Yeah, so we're, we're probably going to take logs in a minute. and But first, before we jump to that, let's think about what this expression is. This is where y enters into. Into, or I mean, where W enters into things, and that's what we're interested in maximizing. So let's see if we can rewrite that, this sum in a in a different way, in a nicer way, maybe. So this is ah okay. So right. So this is a sum of squares. So if we have some numbers, say a i, and we take the sum of their squares, that's equal to, if we made a vector out of these. That would be the dot product of A with itself, you know, if A was the vector of the AIs, the column vector. So this is a sum of squares, you know, right? Each of these YIs is just a real number, it's the, the value, and the, the W and XI, the, the dot product of those, is just a number. So this, this, this is just a sum of squares. So let's, let's see if we can... So let's do let's let's think about this. What so the vector here, right? This is this vector a in this case is going to be y. We can line up all these quantities into a vector. So it's y1 minus w transpose x1 to y n minus w transpose x n. We just put these into a column vector. 
And this equals, we can break off the the y part and the the other part here, the, the w transpose x part. Oh, that's a one. W transpose x n. And this, let's give this a name. This is just the vector of y's. So let's call that, uh, well, I'd like to call it y, but I think we're, we already use y for, well, we tend to use little y for just the value. I guess we haven't used it here. So let's just call that y. So, so this is just y. This is the vector of y, of the y's. And um, sometimes I use little y for a single value, but here, remember, it, it's a vector, column vector. And, um, and this part here, actually let's, right, we can always, you know, w transpose xi equals xi transpose w, because this is a scalar quantity, and the transpose of a scalar is itself. This is the transpose. So let's let's switch these. Let's make it. I think that's going to be a little bit make our life a little easier. So these are now x i transpose w, and we can pull out the w here. So this we can write as x one, the vector of the of x one transpose down to x n transpose times w. I think that's right because, right. So this is a matrix. Each of these is is a is a row in the matrix, and this is just the definition of multiplying a matrix times a column vector. Right. You take the first row, you mul you take the dot product, and um, and that gives you the first entry and so on. So let's give this this matrix. This is a matrix. Let's give it a name. That's a something that we'd like to work with. So let's call it let's call it A. So A is let me write what A is. A is this matrix X1 transpose down to Xn transpose. And this is sometimes called the design matrix. That's what this A is. Okay, so now we've got our nice expression. So we've we've simplified this thing. Well, we've simplified, right? So okay, uh, we've written this to, to this this sum here. The sum of the squares is the remember right that was by our observation here. That was just the dot product of this vector with itself. So that means. back up to here, that sum, I'll just write it here for our so the sum of yi minus w transpose xi squared equals the dot product of, of this vector y minus aw with itself. So that's we can also write as well I'll write it two ways. It's y minus a w transpose times y minus a w and that's also equal to the Euclidean norm of y minus a w squared. Okay so now uh, so, so let's uh, alright we're running out of time in this video but um, we're going to so let's stop there and we'll pick it up in the next video. Alright see you soon.